You're watching channel one, a multilingual channel. Browse through the playlist for your preferred language, and you're watching the gardening series. Warm welcome to you wherever you are in the world. Let's join Romulo at his garden. Warm greetings here. This is Romulo, your kuya and uncle in Holland. This will be a short tutorial on the control of aphids. By the way, you're watching the garden series. Look at my, my seedlings here. Let's start with the chayotes that I started early January. Look how uh, they grown. I nipped them already twice to uh, encourage side shoots and they obey. They look healthy. And here on the lower part, are my sunflower seedlings. They were started um, on Martico. And here are my favorite and my main crop, I should say, the uh, Ampalaya seedlings or Sopropo. If you're watching in the Netherlands or from Suriname, this is called Sopropo or Pari among, the, uh, among those who have Indonesian heritage. Ampalaya or better uh, melon. They look healthy, but not totally. Here are some uh, chile. They look healthy, as I've said, but not totally. They are infested with aphids. They have been kept indoors to promote growth. Plants and us uh, people love warmth to thrive. We need warmth to thrive. But also there are other living things that thrive in warm conditions, the insects and the aphids. There are several ways or known ways to control aphids. One is to manually remove them. This is very tedious, I'd say. Just wrap a masking tape around your finger and manually touch the aphids. That's tedious. Another is to use uh, water. Water pressure is strong, uh, water pressure pointed towards the plant and use water pressure to wash away the, the uh, aphids. We cannot do that here, it, we are indoors. Another is to use mild soap, like a uh, dishwashing soap like this. It's mild and it's also, I think it's uh, organic or bio something. This mild soap. Uh, the, uh, the, this is how it works. The aphids have a very thin shell. They are soft-shelled uh, insects, unlike beetles. They are soft-shelled, and the shell is uh, mainly fat. And when they get in contact with soap solution, the, their skin dissolves. So fat is only sold by soap. That's how it works. That's solution number three. Solution number four is to use neem oil. Look at this, neem oil. It works in a very special way. Uh, neem oil, I don't know how the, uh, the uh, uh, underlying uh, biological process, but when the uh, insects are exposed to neem oil, they stop eating. And of course, when organisms stop eating, they die. Another is when they're exposed to this, they stop mating. So they don't reproduce. <laughs> How can you mate if you're starving? <laughs> That's just logical. Another is the larvae or the eggs don't hatch when exposed to this. So we will be combining these two. We'll be making a neem oil and soap recipe. This will now look like our cooking series. What are the things we need for this uh, solution? We need neem oil. You can uh, order this at different uh, online stores or at the Ayurveda shops and a gentle or mild uh, uh, dishwashing soap. We also need this sprayer, this one, which can contain, uh, uh, let's say, around a half liter so the proportions I'll be sharing later in the description box. Uh, the recipe calls for one 
teaspoon for a liter. Since this is one liter, I'll be using half teaspoon. So oh, it fell. <laughs> and for a liter, one third of detergent soap. It's not, it's okay. It's uh, acceptable to be using more if your uh, plants are heavily infested or if it's the first treatment. Also use warm water because it helps in uh, fast uh, dissolution of the mixture. Shake it. I won't show you the entire uh, duration of shaking to dissolve the mixture. Let's start with the chayotes and it's good to do it outside. Let's bring the chayotes outside. Oh, <laughs> crowded here. For the first treatment, it's uh, good to fully drench the plant. Spray on top, above or the upper side of the leaves and also under. Totally drench the plant. I have a bigger sprayer, but it's in the garden, so I have to use this manual. And now the chili. Last year, I had to redo uh, my chili seedlings because they were eaten by aphids. Now I won't uh, allow the aphids to do that this time, that's why I'm treating this. It's a bit uh, difficult to be growing uh, chilies from seeds because of aphids. I bought this from the garden center. And guess what? It's 8 and 90 cents. If you convert that to peso, that would be 9 times 60, 9 times 6. 9 times 60 pesos. A bit expensive for chili. <laughs> But I need the fresh uh, chili uh, uh, fruit for my Senegal. Next, let's treat the sunflowers. They're one of the favorites of the pests. I don't know why. I think they're delicious. Or maybe they're juicy. Drench uh, the plants. Someone, a Chinese uh, YouTuber, uh, showed how to use alcohol. I did that one time. Alcohol in, in uh, uh, fighting aphids. I did that one time. All my plants died. <laughs> we'll do that again. <laughs> Don't believe everything you see on YouTube. That's a lesson learned. Be careful in adapting everything you see. I've proven this. That's why I'm doing it. But be careful with the proportion. A live audio for this but I don't know what happened I think we disconnected the microphone from the camera the audio has been lost that's why I'm doing this uh, voiceover this time it's better to be uh, explaining this while doing the task than uh, putting a voiceover like what I'm doing now what do we have next Let's do the Ampalaya, my precious crops. My precious crops. I still don't believe the aphids uh, uh, can eat Ampalaya leaves or feed on Ampalaya leaves. They are pungent and bitter. One leaves that uh, aphids don't attack are onions. 
One of their favorites is Dahlia, based from my experience among the among my plants, of course. <laughs> it feels like a what a limited space we have here. Of course, I cannot do it. I cannot do this inside. I have to do this here in this limited space in my Babylonian garden, my hanging garden, or my balcony garden. I can't even remember what I'm what I was saying here. I even forgot to change clothes before doing this. <laughs> it just came from the chest. Okay. Next, the last two uh, uh, Toyotas. You might be wondering what that cup is for. That's for uh, uh, safety. Yeah, it's good practice to uh, put something on top of pointed uh, ends. For ex for instance, cane poles in the garden to uh, avoid accidents. Two years ago, I lost my Toyotas due to aphids. So I had to replant, buy new uh, sh uh, vegetables. What else do we have? Oh, this one. This is a lemon or cafe lime. It's used, the leaves are used for uh, Thai cuisines. It's just aromatic, unbelievable, heavenly precious for me. Although uh, kaffir lime leaves are available in frozen uh, form in the grocery stores, it's better to use uh, your uh, homegrown uh, herbs or homegrown leaves. I bought this, I think, two years ago as a sibling. That concludes our uh, aphage solution this Sunday. Thank you. Romulo here saying goodbye now from the balcony and don't forget to come back for our uh, cooking series and next time see you at the garden for other uh, tasks and tips on gardening don't forget to watch the upcoming cooking series thank you